بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصنون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد صاحب التاج والمعراج والبراق والعلم دافع البلاء والوباء والكحت والمرض والألم الحمد لله All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The one who has honored the universe by manifesting the best of creation Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone Free from any pre-Islamic beliefs Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Alhamdulillah We have Mufti Umar Sharif sat with us again Alhamdulillah yesterday we were blessed to have you on And we uh, thank you for coming on again And inshallah continuing part two well, yeah, I kind of didn't have a choice, did I? <laughs> <laughs> so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yesterday, or as we like to call it, earlier today, we did a recording where we talked about the Shamayal of Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, what we talked about yesterday was that there was uh, two parts to the story. Okay, two parts to the story that. The first of which is covered pretty much by all of the major ayma. Hmm. Now, Imam Qadir Yad gives the second part of this story. So if you recall, the first part of the story was a conversation between Hazrat Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu mm-hmm. and his khal, his mamu, his maternal uncle, mm-hmm. Hazrat Hind ibn Abi Hala radiallahu anhu. Hmm. That description is now complete. Mm-hmm. Hazrat Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu continues. Qala al Hassan. Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu says, Fakatamtuha an al Hussein ibn Ali zamanan. He said, I kept this description from Hussein radiallahu anhu for a while. He's the elder brother. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I kept it from him for a long time. Mm-hmm. Okay? Thumma haddathuhu. Then I told him after this time. I went ahead and told him, like, mm-hmm. what you know about this kind of thing. Then he says, but I found that he had actually beaten me to it. Not only did he get this description, he got a little bit more. He says that he had asked his father, which is his also his own father, yeah, right? Ali. Hazrat Ali, mm-hmm. about how Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to enter a place, how he used to exit, how he used to sit, and his overall appearance. Subhanallah. And he had not omitted anything from that description. Hmm. Now we shift to what Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu has to say. Allah Okay. Qala al Hussein. Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu says, "Saaltu Abi." He said, I asked my father, Sayyidina Ali al-Murtaza radiallahu anhu, hmm. about how Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to enter some place. Mm-hmm. Specifically about how he used to be in his home. Faqala, he said, Hazrat Ali replied, Kana dukhuluhu li nafsihi ma'dhunan lahu fi thalik. He said that when he used to go home, it was for his personal needs. And this is something that he had general permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do. Okay, it's something that, it's not something that uh, would require some kind of procedure. Mm -hmm. Just like someone goes home, he used to go home. Okay. However, his going home and our going home are completely different things, as we're going to see now. فَكَانَ إِذَا أَوَى إِلَى مَنْزِلِهِ جَزَّأَ دُخُولَهُ ثَلَاثَةَ أَجْزَاءَ Whenever he used to um, settle down at home, he used to divide his time at home into three parts. Juz'an lillah. One part for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is for worship, for nawafil, for these things. Okay? For dua. Wa juz'an li ahlihi. And a part for his family. Okay? That would be for all of the family things that we, you know, the typical family things that we know. Wajuz mm-hmm. anli nafsihi and one part for himself. What does that mean? One part for himself. 
Well, he continues, Hazrat Ali continues, ثُمَّ جَزَّأَ جُزْأَهُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ nas. Then after that, he actually used to divide his personal time for himself, between himself and between the people. Mm. Okay, so what did he used to do? فَيَرُدُّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى الْعَامَّةِ بِالْخَاصَةِ He used to have that time he spent with people <clears throat> conveyed to the community through the particular people who used to sit with him at home. <clears throat> okay, naturally, the entire ummah cannot come to his house for that one little part. Mm -hmm. So there were a select few people who would see him every day. And those people would convey what they heard from Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa that day or that night to everybody else. Okay? <clears throat> and he would never withhold anything from them. Hmm. His custom in that time that he gave the ummah was to prefer the people of spiritual excellence with granting permission to visit him. Okay? <clears throat> spiritual excellence means those people who are, um, you know, very firm and steadfast on their deen, right? وَقِسْمَتُهُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ فَضْلِهِمْ فِي الدِّينِ Furthermore, how much time he allotted to each person was based on their excellence with respect to deen. Okay? مِنْ هُمْ ذُو الْحَاجَةِ وَمِنْ هُمْ ذُو الْحَاجَتَيْنِ وَمِنْ هُمْ ذُو الْحَوَائِجِ Some of them came with one particular need, some of them came with two, and some of them came with many needs. فَيَشْ... Sorry. فَيَتَشَاغَلُ بِهِمْ وَيَشْغُلُهُمْ فِي مَا يُسْلِحُهُمْ وَالْأُمَّةَ مِنْ مَسْأَلِتِهِمْ عَنْهُ or on whom I should say, وَإِخْبَارِهِمْ بِالَّذِي يَنْبَغِي لَهُمْ So he occupied himself with them, and he would also um, kept them, keep them busy with those things that would benefit both them and the ummah at large. Mm -hmm. And how did he make sure that this would benefit the ummah at large? By asking these people who visited him about those other people, and uh, informing the people who came to visit him those things that were necessary for them. Okay? وَيَقُولُ And he used to say, لِيُبَلِّغُ الشَّاهِدُ مِنْكُمُ الْغَائِبُ Okay? He used to say that a person should, who is present, should definitely inform or convey what we are talking about to the person who is absent. وَأَبْلِغُونِي حَاجَةَ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُ إِبْلَاغِ حَاجَتَهُ فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ أَبْلَغَ سُلْطَانًا حَاجَةَ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُ إِبْلَاغَهُ ثَبَّتَ اللَّهُ قَدَمَيْهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ He said, convey to me the needs of those who are unable to convey their needs to me. Because the person who conveys to a ruler the need of someone who is unable to convey his own need to that ruler, Allah will make his firm feet on the day. I'm sorry. Allah will make his feet firm on the day of judgment. I'm fumbling Arabic and English today. I'm equal opportunity guy. Mm. Okay. He continues. لا يذكر عنده إلا ذلك ولا يقبلوا من أحد غيره. He said he wouldn't mention. Or actually, I should say, nothing would be mentioned in front of him except for those things. And he wouldn't accept anything uh, from anyone else except that. These were the terms of that personal time that he gave out to people. Okay? Hazrat Ali, in another narration, he says something very interesting. This is actually my favorite part of this narration. Hmm speaking about how people used to sit with Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, how they would come back. He says, يَدْخُلُونَ رَوَّادَ وَيَتَفَرَّقُونَ Sorry, وَلَا يَتَفَرَّقُونَ إِلَّا عَنْ ذَوَاقِ وَيَخْرُجُونَ أَدِلَّهِ He said that they used to enter, they used to come as seekers 
and they wouldn't leave except after having tasted that wisdom that Huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving them. And when they left, they left as guides for other people. Subhanallah. That's just how transformative and profound the suhbat of Huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam is. So Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu continues. He says, "Qultu fa akhbirni an makhrajihi kayfa kana yasnar fi." He said, "Explain to me how he used to spend his time outside." Qala, Hazrat Ali said, "Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaghsunu lisanahu illa mimma ya'nihim wa yu'allifuhum." Okay? He says that Huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to refrain from speaking except about those things that concerned the people and that would bring them together. And he would never say anything. He would never say anything that would drive people away from each other. He would honor the noblemen or the representatives who came from every nation and he would in turn appoint those nobles or those representatives over their peoples he would uphold their authority okay that's a very interesting point he never used to uh, undermine anyone's authority he never used to tear people down hmm. he used to always uh, uphold their authority and always advise them to do what is right subhanallah <laughs> He would be very cautious around people and he would safeguard himself from them but without withholding from anyone his cheer and his good character. He used to check on his companions. He used to check up on them. He used to ask about them. He used to inquire about them. And he used to inquire people who are present about people who are absent. How is this person? What is going on with them? These kinds of things, right? Hmm. Through the virtue of his character, he would very clearly show and dictate the goodness of what was good and the evil of what was bad. Hmm. Okay? Mu'atadil al-amr ghayra mukhtalif. He was a person of well-balanced behavior that was never inconsistent. La yaf'alu makhafata an yakh... Sorry, I messed that part up. La yaghfulu makhafata an yaghfulu o yamullu. He would not um, become inattentive towards anyone, lest they in turn become inattentive or they become bored with what he was saying. He was always showing interest and engaging with people mm. so that they would also in turn be engaged and they would take what he had to give them. Oh. He was prepared for every eventuality. For every situation. Hmm. He had preparation for every possible situation. He was never deficient in fulfilling any right, nor was he excessive in fulfilling that right to someone else. Those who were close to him from the people were the best of them. Now, who are the best of those people? The best of people, according to him, were the people who were most prolific with their sincere advice. Right? And that is regarding deen. Right? If you remember another hadith of Huzu, he said, mm -hmm. Ad deen un right? Yeah. Religion is sincere advice. He said that the people who were greatest in stature, according to him, were those people who were the best in um, empowerment or charity and support. Okay? 
Hazrat Imam Hussein continues, فَسَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ مَجْلِسِهِ عَمَّا كَانَ يَسْنَعُ فِيهِ He said, I asked him after that about his gatherings, what he used to do therein. فَقَالَ So Hazrat Ali رضي الله عنه says, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَا لَا يَجْلِسُ وَلَا يَقُومُ إِلَّا عَلَى ذِكْرٍ Huzur صلى الله عليه وسلم would not sit down or stand up without the remembrance of Allah. SubhanAllah. وَلَا He would never designate places for him to sit. Hmm. Nor would he allow others to do the same. He used to forbid other people from designating places. Yes. Okay. وَإِذَا إِنْتَهَا إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ جَلَسَ حَيْثُ يَنْتَهِ بِهِ الْمَجْلِسِ Whenever he came to a group of people sitting down, he would sit down at the edge. He would sit at the edge of the gathering. وَيَأْمُرُ بِذَلَكَ And he would tell other people to do the same thing. وَيُعْتِي كُلَّ جُلَسَائِهِ نَصِيبَهُ حَتَّى لَا يَحْتَسِبَ جَلِيسُهُ أَنَّ أَحَدًا أَكْرَمُ عَلَيْهِ مِنْهُ he would give his sitting companion, whomever it was, his share of his cheer and his share of his character, his share of his um, good-naturedness, so much that whomever was sitting with him did not think that there was anyone more beloved to Huzur Wasallam than himself. Each person thought that about himself in relation to Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how much attention he used to give them when they were sitting next to him. Man jalasahu aw qawamahu lihajatin sabarahu hatta yakuna huwa al-munsarifa anhu. Whenever someone would stand with him or sit with him to discuss any kind of need, Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be so patient with that person that the pers- first person to leave was always the person who came to ask. Allah. Nobody came to speak to Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He never left first. That person always left on his own. That's how patient Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with people. Man sa'alahu hajatan lam yaruddahu illa biha o bimaysura min al Whomever asked him for something, Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not let him go without giving that thing to him or without giving him some kind of dua or dhikr to make it easy for him. وَقَدْ وَسِعَ النَّاسَ بَسْطُهُ وَخُلْقُهُ فَصَارَ لَهُمْ أَبًا وَصَارُوا عِنْدَهُ فِي الْحَقِّ مُتَقَارِبِينَ مُتَفَادِلِينَ فِيهِ بِالتَّقْوَى Very interesting statement. Hazrat Ali said, his cheer and his disposition enveloped the people such that it was as if he became like a father to them. And they became like relatives with respect to gaining his mercy. And they were uh, differing in their ranks according to how much taqwa they had in their hearts, how much consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they had in their hearts. Majlisuhu majlisu hilmin wa hayain wa sabrin wa amana. He says that his gatherings were gatherings of forbearance, modesty, patience, and trust. <laughs> trust means no one would speak ill about each other or no one, whatever business was discussed in those meetings, it wasn't discussed outside. Wala turfa'u fihi aswat In those gatherings, voices were not raised. Wala tu'banu fihi al-hurum and no one's honor was ever offended. And no one's faults were ever exposed. People loved each other through their mutual taqwa that they had. Through the taqwa that they had, they would love each other. They would be humble with each other. وَيُرْفِدُونَ ذَا الْحَاجَةِ وَيَرْحَمُونَ الْغَرِيبِ They would uh, respect the elderly, they would be tender with children, and they would help someone in need, and they would have mercy on strangers. 
This is how the gatherings of Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa were. What a picture Hazrat Ali is painting. فَسَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ سِيرَتِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فِي جُلَسَائِهِ Next, Hazrat Imam Hussain asks, I asked my father about the behavior of Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the people in his gatherings. فَقَالَ So Hazrat Ali replied, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَس he said that Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa was someone who was of constant cheer and very easygoing disposition. Layin al janib, gentle towards everyone. Laysa bi fadhin, wala ghalidhin, wala sakhab, wala fahash, wala ayyab, wala maddah. He was not someone who was mean. He was not someone who was harsh. He was not someone who was loud. He was not someone who was obscene. He was not someone who was critical. Nor was he someone who was overly praising someone else. Oh. He would ignore something that he didn't like. Anything he didn't like, he would just pretend like he didn't see it. Wala yu yasumin. No one ever lost hope in him. Allah. He had completely, he was completely devoid of three things. Riya, ostentatiousness. Ikthar, excess. And anything that did not concern him. And he would be, uh, he, he let people go regarding three things. He would never disparage anyone. Nor would he uh, mention their faults. Nor would he try to seek out their private matters. Hmm. I believe uh, there's a Hadith Sharif Mafum being that one of some of the companions, they would relate that Rasulullah he was the best of teachers and that they would never disparage him, they would never insult him, they would never do anything that... Uh, they would never do anything. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would never do anything bad in regards to teaching them. He would always, like you said, in a fatherly manner, would teach them. Right. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wala illa He would never speak about anything except those things from which reward could be expected. Ida takallama. Whenever he spoke, the people in the gatherings would lower their heads as if there was a bird sitting down on top. Whenever he was silent, they would speak. But no one would ever compete to say something. No one would try to talk over the other person. مَنْ تَكَلَّمَ عِنْدَهُ أَنْصَطُوا لَهُ حَتَّى يَفْرُغَ Whomever spoke in front of him, everybody else would be quiet until that person finished speaking. حَدِيثُهُمْ حَدِيثُ أَوَّلِهِمْ Their conversation in the gathering towards the end would be like just like it was at the beginning. It wouldn't morph into something else. It stayed consistent throughout. يَضْحَكُ مِمَّا يَضْحَكُونَ مِنْهُ وَيَتَعَجَّبُ مِمَّا يَتَعَجَّبُونَ مِنْهُ He would laugh at whatever they were laughing at and he would be amazed at whatever they were amazed at. He never reacted differently. وَيَسْبِرُ لِلْغَرِيبَ عَلَى الْجَفْوَةِ فِي الْمَنْطِقِ And he used to be patient with a stranger when that stranger spoke roughly. ويقول, and he used to say, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ صَاحِبَ الْحَاجَةِ يَطْلُبُهَا فَأَرْفِدُوهُ وَلَا يَطْ So that's what he used to say. He used to say, whenever someone who has a need comes seeking it, you see that person, أَرْفِدُوهُ Help him out. وَلَا يَطْلُبُ الثَّنَا إِلَّا مِنْ مُكَافِيًا and he never used to accept any kind of praise except from somebody who would do so moderately. And he would never interrupt uh, any person's 
speech or any person's talk until such that he would tolerate anything, whatever they were saying for as long as they were saying it. And that person who was speaking would either cut that conversation short either by finishing what he had to say or by getting up to leave. Hazrat Imam Hussein continues, Qultu, kaifa kana sukutuhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, how was the silence of Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Qala Hazrat Ali replies, kana sukutuhu ala arba' His silence was due to four things. Ala al-hilmi, wal-hadari, wal-taqdeer, wal-tafakkur. Either for hilm, forbearance, tolerating something, just letting something, ha- just letting that person say their piece. Hadar, caution. Taqdeer, deliberation. Or tafakkur, contemplation. So what, are, what do all these things mean? Hazrat Ali explains these things. فَأَمَّا تَقْدِيرُهُ فَفِي تَسْوِيَةِ النَّذَرُ وَالْإِسْتِمَعْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ What was his deliberation? It was just about equalizing the attention and listening between people. When he was listening to the parties, he would be silent just so that he could hear both sides equally. Hmm. Okay? وَأَمَّا تَفَكُّرُهُ فِيمَا يَبْقَى وَيَفْنَى فَفِيمَا يَبْقَى وَيَفْنَى He says that his contemplation was about whatever would pass away from this world and whatever would remain. وَجُمِعَ لَهُ الْحِلْمُ فِي الصَّبْرِ And his forbearance was often combined with his patience. فَكَانَ لَا يُغْضِبُهُ الشَّيْءٌ يَسْتَفِزُّهُ And anything that may have unsettled him would never upset him. Just because of his patience and his forbearance, something that would be provocative or something that would be upsetting, because of his silence for this reason, would never upset him. No. And as for his caution, there were four things that were involved with his caution. وَإِجْتِهَادُ الرَّاي بِمَا أَصْلَحَ أُمَّتَهُ وَالْقِيَامُ لَهُمْ بِمَا جَمَعَ لَهُمْ أَمْرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ He said that either it was to do something good so that it could be emulated or leave something bad so that it could be, it could be to, uh, forbidden, right? Um or expending all of his effort in thinking of what would benefit his ummah and also undertaking for them whatever would bring together for them the affairs of the dunya and the akhirah. SubhanAllah. This is the full description that Hazrat Ali gives. SubhanAllah. This is the full version of this story. It's a very, very beautiful story. You're hearing from people who grew up in the household of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hind ibn Abi Hala, Hazrat Ali, who was informally adopted by Huzur, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first person, it's related, he saw when he opened his eyes was Huzur, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first person to name him was Huzur, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the level of detail he's describing everything, not just physical appearance. The reason that uh, this narration exists in this way is because the, the descriptions of Hazrat Hind ibn Abi Hala and Hazrat Ali, though they're completely different people, those descriptions are virtually identical. Mm-hmm. If you look in the Shamail, uh, Imam Tirmidhi narrates from both Hind ibn Abi Hala and Hazrat Ali and other people like uh, 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 Hazrat Umm Ma'bad and others. Right? So, look at the detail with which they're describing these things it's a big big lesson not only in the description and the qualities of huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam but just to see how easily emulable so many of his sunan actually are may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfect our following of huzur sallallahu alaihi wasallam ameen ya rabbal alamin and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Give us the love, reverence, and respect for Huzur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all of these individuals without whom we would not have the information that we have today. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala sayyidina wa awlana muhammadin khayril bariyya 
wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lamhatin wa nafasin adada ma wasi'ahu ilm Allah.